Hey, grade 10 math students, here's the uh, video for um, section 6.2, solving quadratic equations by factoring. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is learn how to solve quadratics. Um, solving means to find the x-intercepts. Okay, so we're going to learn how to find the x-intercepts of a quadratic. Um, finding the roots means the same thing. Okay, if, if you see a question that says finding the, find the roots of a quadratic or find the x-intercepts or, or solve the quadratic, those three things all mean the same thing. Okay, so anytime we're solving a quadratic or finding the roots, what we're doing is finding the x-intercepts. So the objective of today is to solve quadratic equations that are given in standard form by factoring. Okay, so how we're going to do that is we are going to here's the steps here. Okay, to solve a quadratic equation by factoring, we must first set the equation to equal zero. Okay, so before factoring, it must be in the form ax squared plus bx plus e equals zero. Okay, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, y is equal to that. Okay, so y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. To find the x-intercepts, we must set it equal to zero. Okay, why we do that, you may remember from a pre previous chapter. Okay, why we do this is because if this is our, our graph here, you know, I'll make it a little bit bigger here. If, um, if here's our parabola here, okay? This is our parabola right here, okay? We want to be able to solve for the x-intercepts, so we want to figure out what these points are, okay, what the coordinates of those points are. But we know, okay, this is my y scale here, okay? This is my y scale. I know that every point on the x-axis is going to have a y value of zero. Okay, everything on the x-axis is a y value of zero, and the x-intercepts are where the parabola goes through the x-axis. So x-intercepts will always have a y-coordinate of zero. Okay, because every point on the x-axis has a y value of zero. That's why when we're solving for the x-intercepts, we can set y to equal zero. Okay, because we know every point on the x-axis okay, has a y value of 0. And x-intercepts are where the parabola goes through that x-axis. Okay. Next, we have to factor the left side of the equation. Okay. So we have to factor this. We know how to factor that. Okay. We can factor that differently depending on if the a value is 1 or if it's not 1. Okay. And we'll review those methods um, in this lesson right here as well. Okay. After that, we set each factor to equal 0 and solve for x. Why we set each factor equal to 0 okay, is because of the zero product rule right here. If two factors have a product of 0, one or both of the factors must equal 0. So if we have factored this quadratic in standard form, let's say our factors ended up being x plus 3 times x plus 4. Okay? So we factored the left side right here, and that's what we got. And we know this is equal to zero because we set it equal to zero. According to the zero product rule, if we have two factors being multiplied by each other and their product is zero, the value of one of these factors or both of them must be zero. So I have something times something equals zero. So one of these somethings have to be zero, okay? Because zero times something is always zero. So maybe the x plus three is equal to zero. So we set that equal to zero. Set x plus 3 equal to 0, and solve for x. Just move the 3 to the other side, it becomes negative. Okay, so maybe, maybe that left factor is equal to 0. Okay, that would mean that our x-intercept is negative 3. Or, we consider the other case, we consider that maybe, according to the zero product rule, one of these factors must be 0, so let's consider if x plus 4 is 0. Okay, if x plus 4 is 0, set it equal to 0. If x plus 4 is 0, that means that x must be negative 4. Okay, so my x-intercepts are negative 3 and negative 4. Those are the two spots where the, where the parabola will go through the x-axis. Okay, so using the zero product rule, knowing that at least that one of these must be 0 for the product to be 0, okay, I set them both equal, I set each factor equal to 0, and then solve for x, and that gives me my x-intercepts. Okay. So let's do an example. 
So we're given a quadratic in standard form, right here, x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0, and we're asked to solve this. Okay? So this quadratic has already been set equal to 0 for us. Okay? So the first step is already done for us. It must be set equal to 0. Okay? Now we have to factor the left side of the equation. This is a quadratic with an a value of 1. Okay? So all we have to do, so when a is 1, what we have to do is check for a common factor, and there isn't one. Then look for the b and c value. Okay? b value is 4, c value is 3. And we need two numbers who have a product of c. So a product of 3, a product of 3, and a sum of our b value, which is 4. The two numbers that multiply to give 3 and add to give 4 are 3 and 1. Okay? 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Now that we've found what factors multiply to give c and add to give b, we put those factors into x plus r times x plus s for r and s. Okay, so we re so x squared plus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. We can factor this. Its factored form is x plus 3 times x plus 1. Okay, we put 3 and 1 in for r and s because 3 and 1 are the numbers that have a product of c and a sum of b. Now what we do, knowing that the zero product rule states that um, if two factors have a product of 0, one or both of these factors have to be zero. So we can set each to solve for x-intercepts. What we're doing now is this third step, setting each factor to equal zero, okay? And then solving for x. So first one, x plus 3, set that to equal zero. x equals negative 3, when we move the 3 to the other side. And let's do the one over, other one over here. x plus 1, that's the other factor. Set that to equal zero. Move the 1 to the other side, it becomes negative 1. So our x-intercepts are negative 1 and negative 3. Okay? You could also say the roots are negative 3 and negative 1, um, or the solutions are negative 3 and negative 1, or x-intercepts are negative 3 and negative 1. All those terms are synonymous. Okay? Let's do another example where we'll have to use the other factoring method, okay? So if we want to solve 6x squared minus x equals 15, what you'll notice about this one is it's not set equal to 0 right now. But it must be set equal to 0 before we can factor it. So what we need to do is move this 15 to the left, okay? So I'm going to move this, the positive 15 to the left side of the equation. It's going to become negative. And I'm left with nothing. I'm left with 0 on the right side of the equation now. Okay, so now on the left side, I have a quadratic in standard form. On the right, it's set equal to zero. Now, let's factor the left side. This is a quadratic where the a, a quadratic where the a um, cannot be factored out and is not one. Okay, six doesn't go into negative one and negative 15, so we can't factor it out. Okay, and six is clearly not one. So we need this factoring method. So what we need to do is find two numbers who have a product of a times c, a times c, okay? Multiply a and c together. So product of a times c, 6 times negative 15 is negative 90. And I need to find two numbers who have a sum of b, a sum of negative 1. So we need to find two numbers that have a product of negative 90 and a sum of negative 1. And those two numbers are negative 10 and 9. Okay, so what we do now, now that we've determined what factors um, add to give b, and have a product of a times c, what we do now is break the b value up into those terms. Okay, so we're going to break the b value up into those terms. So we had 6x squared minus x minus 15 equals 0. We're going to break this negative x into a negative 10x plus 9x. Okay, negative 10x plus 9x is negative x. Okay, so I still have the 6x squared out front, and I have minus 15 here. That's equal to 0. Now I need to fact why I broke this up into two terms in the middle here is so I can factor by grouping now. Okay, so all I do to factor by grouping is group the first two terms together. Okay, group the first two terms together. Group the second two terms together. 
or the, the last two terms, sorry, and separate with an addition sign. Okay, putting that addition sign between, okay, is what allows us to put brackets up because when you're adding polynomials, you can just remove the brackets. Or when we're adding polynomials, we can just put the brackets up. Okay, it works both ways. Okay, now we have them in groups that have common factors. Okay, when, we, when they weren't in groups, there was no common factor between all three, between all four, sorry. But now they're in groups, we can factor each group separately. So, greatest common factor between 6x squared and negative 10x is 2x. So I'm going to take it out 2x from both. And when I divide those, both of these terms by 2x, what I get is 3x minus 5, okay? And then greatest common factor between 9x and negative 15 is 3. If I take out a 3 from both, divide both of the terms inside the bracket by 3, and I'll put 3x minus 5 as well, okay? Now you'll see I have a common binomial. They both have a 3x minus 5. So I can factor out that 3x minus 5. Factor out the 3x minus 5. And then when I divide both of these terms by 3x minus 5, these will cancel out. And what I'll be left with is a 2x plus 3. There we go. Now I have my two factors. And this will happen every time when you factor by grouping. Okay, when you factor by grouping, you'll get a common binomial if you do it properly. Okay, and then you'll be able to factor out that common binomial. And you'll get your two factors. Okay, now that I have my two factors, we do step three, where we set each factor to zero and solve for x. And remember why we set them both equal to zero is because of that zero product rule, okay? Because one of these must be zero if their product is zero. So set 3x minus 5 equal to zero. And then solve. So move the 5 to the other side. Becomes positive. And then divide the 3 over. Okay, I have 3 times x on this side, so to move it to the other side, I must divide it over. So there's one solution. x equals 5 over 3. Let's do the other case where 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. Okay. Move the 3 to the other side, it becomes negative. And then divide the 2 over. There's my other solution. Make sure you can see that's a negative. Okay, so my two solutions are 5 over 3 and negative 3 over 2. So my x-intercepts are 5 over 3 and negative 3 over 2. Okay, so those are the two points where the parabola will go through the x-axis at 5 over 3 on the x-axis and at negative 3 over 2 on the x-axis. Okay, so that's all there is to solving quadratics um, by factoring. Okay, you just have to remember your factoring skills and then set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, hope this video helped. Let me know if you have any questions.